the dead. This is a nightmare. Enough about nightmares. You've got to be on your way before the house is out for breakfast. Look alive, Carl. You'll never be a hired looking coward. I read this note. I told your mother I'd do what I could, and now I've done it. Keep your hat over your face. Your mug's been in the papers. You can't tell him the truth or they'll send you packing. And God hates a liar, so just keep your mouth shut. You hear me? Keep your mouth shut. Well, honey, now. Go on. Can't you talk? Oh, Lorraine, of course she can talk. Will you let me eat sweets? Lorraine? Oh, she gets far too many sweets as it is. Her father cannot say no. Will you paint with me and read me stories? Well, of course she will, won't you, Alice? Oh, yes, Mom. Has Trevor got one of his famous smiles for Alice? Okay. Our nanny walked out on us. Well, not quite, but she did leave us in a pickle. We need to find a replacement quickly. We're going on a big boat. That's right, dear. Tomorrow we get on a big boat for New York. Would you like Alice uh, to come with us? I don't know. Oh, well, of course you do. What about you, Trevor? Do you like Alice? Hmm? Maybe you should hold him. I'd like him to get used to you before uh, we sail. You're supposed to hold his head. The note said that you've had experience with babies. I mean, that's imperative. Oh, yes, Mom. I've got experience. I love children. I, I was just nervous, that's all. Oh, well, there's no need to be nervous around us. We're just regular people. The most important thing is that you give our children loving care. Oh, my heavens. What a lucky girl you are. We're going to be sailing on the Titanic. Is the crew in order? Well, he's a fine bunch, sir. I know quite a few of them. Most come from the same neighborhood here in Southampton, but these 900 men never sailed together as a crew before, so there's a bit of confusion. Still, all in all, they're as proud of bunch as I've ever seen. Indeed, to serve aboard this vessel. Uh, also, Captain, well, to serve under you. Well, thank you, Mr. Lowry. There's always a bit of apprehension on a maiden voyage, but I have the greatest faith in all of my officers and men, including yourself, sir. Now I'm afraid I must face the most perilous part of the voyage, meeting all of those reporters. We have here the largest movable man-made structure in the world. A super ship, if you will. Eleven stories high, five city blocks long. A boat this big, it has to be slower than the Lusitania. Does the Lusitania have a library, a swimming pool, a Turkish bath? Offering luxury, a colossal showcase. And I can assure you, young man, that this ship will give the Lusitania a run for her money. Is it your vision, Mr. Ismay, or the owner's? Well, in all fairness to J.P. Morgan, may I remind you that my father founded the White Star Line. And now I, as managing director, intend to bring it into the 20th century. Ah, here he is. Uh, Captain. Captain Smith, is it true you're retiring after this voyage? Uh, that's true. Will you be writing a book about your adventures? Well, it'll be a very short book, I'm afraid. I haven't had much adventure. What about wrecks, accidents? Well, there have been winter squalls and storms and fog, but I've never had any adventure worth writing about. <laughs> Certainly not recording for posterity. I'm afraid that I enjoy uneventful sea voyages. Like the one you're embarking on, sir. Exactly. The shipbuilding has become such an art now that a disaster is unthinkable. My job has become... Uh... Oh, effortless. Thank you. Effortless. <laughs> <laughs> now, gentlemen, may I point out the dining room? Oh, yes. mm. To your information, we are stocked with 75,000 pounds of fresh meat, 11,000 pounds of fresh fish, 120 pounds of marmalades and jams, and, of course, stock of the finest libations, cognac... Oh, one moment. Yes. Sandeman Port, 1870. Very good. Thank you. And we have, uh, not there, as chairs should go on the private promenade outside. Uh, they should be a darker green. 
They will be repainted before the next sailing. You can be sure of that. Uh, we have seen to every detail. What about lifeboats? We have complied with the statutes of the British Board of Trade. But, gentlemen, we have here the largest, most beautiful, and technically perfect ship in the history of mankind. <laughs> We're not going to need lifeboats. I thank you for your attention. And now, First Officer Murdoch here will take you on a short tour of the bridge. Good day to you. Good day, thank this you. way, gentlemen. Got a rum here, mate. Here, take me, Kaplan. Keep your head in your booze and your wits about you. I work for this. <laughs> Walked inside. Say farewell to Bloomin' England. I'm set for Niagara Falls. That's in America. You see her out there? See her? The Titanic. Biggest ship ever made. It docked right outside that door there. Here. <laughs> see that? <laughs> it's... It's me ticket to a new life, eh? No more coal dust for Miriam Dickey. <laughs> America! I'm the biggest ship I've ever dreamed. <laughs> Imagine, Miriam Dickey, sailing with some of the richest people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right about that. John Jacob Astor himself will be on that boat. That's a fact. All the money and jewels on board. Priceless paintings. A thief could have himself a high old time. Do you ever see a diamond tiara? <laughs> Can't say I have. Of course, the trick is getting the booty off the boat. Strings of pearls. Oh, yes, sir. A thief could have himself a grand old time. Mm. I'll be calling it a day. Man's got to get his sleep. Hey, I owe you one. No. Just the tiara. <laughs> you be careful. Hey, <laughs> Miriam Dickey, on the same ship as John Jacob Astor. <laughs> That's the joke of it, eh, lad? <laughs> Here, T to the Titanic. Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> So I can see and keep my mama and all my father will never cut our be across the sea. Come on, Dickie, you can't sleep here now, can you? My, my brother's got me a job. A whole new life for Mary and Dickie. Yeah. Hey, yeah. wake up. I'll take you back to your boarding house. Dickie. Dickie. Thanks it is to you, Mr. Dickey. Maybe I'll say goodbye to Bloomin' England myself.
repent of your wickedness, I hear shrieks and cries and moaning. You shall sink in the dark waters and never be heard of again. This is paradise. Isabella. We're both going on the Titanic. It must be fate. I don't believe in fate, Mr. Park. Please excuse me. A death shall cover thee. Thou shalt sink deep in the ocean like a stone. Yes, miss. Ludvigsen? Ludvigsen. A lovely little lady traveling alone, are you? Uh, she's a convert, traveling with the group. My husband here is Black Billy Jack, and he's big enough to take you on, and a few more like you. So don't go bullying us because of our religion. We're no simps. No clever in there. Uh, I be a blacksmith, sir. That's where my nickname comes from, not from my nature. Excuse me, I'm looking for the men's quarters. Well, look what the cat dragged in. I don't think I caught your name, chum. <clears throat> Miriam Dickey. Dickey, you say? <laughs> Well, Mr. Dickey, I don't suppose you'll be traveling with these converts? No, traveling alone. Well, run along then, chum. I'll catch up with you later. Miss Ludwigson, if you'll step this way, the steward down the corridor will give you a cabin, Mr. and Mrs. Jack. All the little Jacks. I'm told we'll have crisp nights, but clear skies straight across by Mr. Park. Henry, good to see you, Henry. Well, likewise, I'm sure, sir. You will see many familiar faces. Many of the regulars have joined us, sir. Mr. Wynne Park, across the hall from you, real gentleman. I have crossed the Atlantic six times with him. Generous man, if you know what I mean. I must ask for another stateroom. Mrs. Paradine, this one is exquisite. Every detail is... Please see what you can arrange. Mrs. Paradine, everything is booked solid. It's impossible. I can't stay here. Please, any room at all, just far from this one. Yes, of course. Thank you. Your poor dear Aunt Grace, how sad for you, her passing. Well, I took matters into my own hands as soon as I realized that you were sailing with us. You will dine at our table, of course, and no moments alone. I'll see to that. And my granddaughter, Lulu, she'll keep you company. And my baby, Charlie. <laughs> Lulu, don't slump. It's so lovely to see you. Don't look now. That's the infamous Molly Brown. Her husband made a fortune in silver and gold mines. They say he tried to shoot her twice. It was a terrible scandal. She's crude, but one can't ignore her. She's far too rich. Hi. Oh, the Strausses. They own Macy's department store. Jewish. Oh, and Benjamin Guggenheim. <laughs> Most people are content to bring back souvenirs of the Eiffel Tower from Paris. He's bringing back his mistress. He's not sitting at our table. Huh. Oh, the Wideners. Al, Lulu, the, the, the Wideners. Tugs all so fast. Take her out, Robert. Hotel to me. <laughs> <laughs> See? See there, little darling? Wave to all the people. Goodbye to England. Goodbye, England. <laughs> Here! Up in Rome! Up in Rome!
there's uh, something wrong, miss. I left my family back in Denmark. I never see them again. I grabbed my mother's nightcap from the clothesline. That's all I have of her. Well, more than I have of mine. I look for a better life. Yeah, me too. Oh, my heart is divided. Yeah, well, it's better you don't have a heart. An emigrant must have courage. I have to keep thinking of that. To be grateful to be on this beautiful ship. This is nothing. Steerage. Now, up there in first class, they got gold mirrors and crystal chandeliers. What is this first class? We all get to America at the same time. Yeah, but they get there in style. That's why I plan to do business. There in first class. Don't take courage. Take smarts. Throw that bit of raggedy cap away. Let go of the past. Get your slot. Well, now, that is the idea, isn't it? Steers can't mingle amongst the other passengers. Why? Yank immigration laws on account of infectious diseases. Well, I'm not asking you to kiss me. Just let me through. I'm not about to lose my stripes on the first day out. I, ju I just want to look around. Hey, nobody will know the difference. In that suit. What's wrong with my bloody suit? I gave my love a cherry. What had no stone? Come on, let's go. I gave my love a chicken. Ever's cold, Alice. No Please, it's cold out here. I gave my love. It's a night, baby. Alice. Trevor needs his supper. You're I supposed to take no care of us. Time. Stop whining. Stop whining. Stop whining. Excuse, excuse, please. These children. Did you see Mrs. Astor? Mrs. Astor? Mrs. John Jacob Astor. You don't know who John Jacob Astor is? The richest man in the world? I think I know you. Were you in Cairo last month with the Henderson's baby? Oh, I've never been to Cairo. <gasps> Mrs. Astor! Your ache. Catch cold. And in your condition. It's chilly out here. We can't be too careful. You're right, Miss Miller. I keep telling my wife that. Now, promise me you will eat a good dinner. They say our body needs these things they've discovered called vitamins. She eats like a bird, you know. She's eating for two now, and she's not getting her vitamins. <laughs> Just a few more moments, John, please, before we have to walk into the dining room. I have to be calm. <laughs> and regal when they all start to gossip. <laughs> Come, my dear. Mrs. <laughs> Astor, Mrs. Astor. Mother Foley, the Astors. Oh. I should think they would be dining in their state room. I mean, the nerve, they must have boarded a chairboard. Mr. Astor is a frequent passenger on the White Star Line. Not with her, I know the real Mrs. Astor, the first Mrs. Astor. They say she's expecting. Well, she can have a litter of little Astors, but she will never be accepted in polite society. Try to hell with polite society. They got each other in the U.S. Mint. 
Excuse me. Captain Smith. Ah, how may I assist you, madam? It's about Lulu. Uh, your daughter. Oh, actually, my granddaughter. We are always mistaken. <laughs> Captain, I was wondering, perhaps you might know of some nice gentleman on board who might be of some company to Lulu. Someone dignified, substantial. Someone like yourself, only... Only uh, younger. No, 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 not younger. Lulu is so incomplete. Uh, an older man would be helpful. No, I, I meant someone... Well-to-do, wealthier. Exactly. The trip to Europe was disastrous. All the men are foreigners, fortune hunters. Well, I promise you, I will keep my eyes open. Oh, thank you, Captain. Another bottle, sir? I'd like it before we get to New York. Oh, yes. You don't mind? <laughs> Good health. This is my third crossing with the captain, and last time I even sat at his table. 25 years, is it? With the White Star Line. The world's greatest ship and the world's greatest captain. <laughs> Here's to a rip-roaring maiden voyage for us and the Titanic. Well, since it is my last voyage, I was hoping for something a little calm. How fast are we going, Captain? I have a wager on it with Allison here. I say we're traveling in excess of 20 knots. You will excuse me. Captain Smith doesn't like to talk about speed, but I think it's safe to say that Mr. Allison owes you some money. <laughs> Now, Mrs. Brown, would you care for some more oysters? Ooh, don't mind if I do. Yeah. <laughs> They're delicious. Oh. Big and fat and juicy. Oh, and some more, some more wine, please. Lafitte Rothschild. We don't get wine like this in Denver. <laughs> Boy, you built some robo here, Mr. Ismay. Well, I'm glad you're impressed, Mrs. Brown. Yes, I was determined to create a ship for the 20th century. One must be a visionary. Now, uh, may I recommend the pressed pheasant or perhaps the uh, poulard poché à l'estragon? <laughs> <laughs> no skinny little poulard for me. Ah. I'm having roast mutton <laughs> and yo a mouton. You speak French? I hired a French tutor. He pulled a cork from a champagne bottle and put it in my mouth. The cork, not the bottle. <laughs> he said it'd force me to hold my mouth open when I talked. Well, I told him most people preferred me with my mouth shut. <laughs> we are forgetting Mrs. Paradine. All this festivity. Poor darling, your dear Aunt Grace passed recently in London. All those months alone in London, taking care of the burial and your aunt's affairs. I suppose things were jumbled. We promised your husband that we'd watch over you on the voyage home. That's very kind of you. The Paradines have the most beautiful estate on the Hudson. <laughs> and your little girl is a dream. Miss Wally, could I have the pleasure of a dance? Oh, well, Lulu well, would love to dance, Mr. Park. As long as it isn't that abominable turkey trot. <laughs> One wonders what the world is coming to sometimes. Posture, Lulu. Such a charming man. And so very handsome. Our little Lulu could do worse. Our little Lulu couldn't do any better. He's shrewd, <laughs> intelligent. And loaded. Yeah. A marriage made in heaven. <laughs> you must long to dance to a young woman like you. It's so sad you're stuck in black for the whole crossing. It doesn't do much for your delicate complexion. I suppose your aunt's husband is grieving. The marriage only lasted a year, Mrs. Foley. I don't know where Mr. Santalisa is now. Why, well, she gave up everything for that scoundrel. Well, what can you expect, an Italian? He was after her inheritance. I said so. Poor woman. On the contrary, Mrs. Foley. My aunt had no regrets. In fact, just before she died, she told me it was a glorious year. No matter what the price, it was worth a lifetime. Would you excuse me? I have such a terrible headache. Oh, poor lady. Let me help you to your room. No, no, please, please continue with your dinner. Isabella, wait. Go back to your dancing partner, Mr. Park. You're jealous. You're jealous. Now, you know how I feel. You can imagine what's been happening to me all these years. Eddie Paradine has everything your family's ever wanted for you. 
money, and a pedigree. He's a kind man, a gentleman, a good husband. Well, your marriage must have pleased your father and your mother. The parents are both dead now. The past is the past, irretrievable. It's been with me every moment of every day. Do you think it's been the same for me? Oh, Bella. Oh, Bella. I'm married, Lynn. I never expected to see you again. You broke my heart. without them. You planning to have pups yourself? <laughs> Me? No. Oh, no. Wouldn't be so good at it. Uh, raising pups. I mean. Prison. What's out there, Mr. Boxall? Looks like a freighter. Yes, sir. The Rappahannock on opposite course. She's morsing us. She's warning us of icebergs and heavy iceberg ahead. Where are the other binoculars? They only gave us one pair for the bridge. Mr. Boxall, I will not have my officers passing around one bloody pair of glasses. Now take the ones from the crow's nest. Lookouts won't like this. Huh? I'm not concerned with what they like. They'll manage well enough until we reach New York. TJ, you sure you won't join us for another hang? No, no, night captain, then to bed. I promised my wife. I forgot. You're a newlywed. Mm. <laughs> What's the matter? Never seen a woman smoke a cigar before? No, <laughs> I mean, not a lady anyway, not like you. <laughs> we'll get used to it. Woman's emancipation. We can smoke cigars. We can tell you men how to run the world. Hell, we'll probably have a woman president in the next hundred years. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be around to see that. Yeah, well, I hope I won't. <laughs> Go buy you another drink. Some brew on me. Whatever he's drinking. I come into a bit of money recently. I'll share my good fortune. Well, thank you, young man. You uh, down in your cups? No, you might say that. I've remarried recently. Mm. <laughs> well, that'll do it. <laughs> no, no, I'm happily married. Mm. I'm only worried about the reception my new wife received tonight in the dining room. Mm. She's very young. People can be cruel. Yeah, well, a bunch of stiffs fool themselves and all their money. Mm. Some tugboat, eh? Yes, it's a thing of beauty. Have you been to America before? No, no, looking forward to it. Uh, I might go into a bit of business. You ever hear this chap called uh, Max Sennett? Got himself a moving picture company. 
calls it keystone, up and coming sort of thing. Yeah. Let me give you a bit of advice. I always find investors for my project. It's better to use another fellow's money. <laughs> yeah, well, sir, I can drink to that. I believe in using the other fellow's money too. <laughs> I actually, uh, thinking more about um, acting in the Keystone Company. Might do a bit of Shakespeare. Well, I'm sure you'll do well in America. Whatever you decide at, young fella like yourself. Yeah, well, nice to meet you. No! no. Oh, God. Clumsy, so My sorry. My wife will think I'm a sot. I'll have this clean for you. I, I got connections in the laundry. Don't worry about it. Good evening to you, and I will watch for you in the moving pictures. Another brandy, ma'am. I make it a double. Yes, sir. Wake up, you're having a nightmare. My baby. He was dead in the water. Dead. It's only a dream, Alice. You don't have a baby, Alice. That's right, Lorraine. Now go back to sleep. Mommy's here, sweetness. We don't want to frighten the children now, do we? <laughs> there, ice, there was ice in a shipwreck, and he was out there in the freezing water. Oh, dear, now the baby, Alice, please. What is it? A bad dream, apparently. She's very nervous. There's the night garments on backwards. We stop at Queenstown tomorrow. I think it's best for all of us if Alice gets off there in Ireland. you lost, Mr. Dickey? Oh, you. Uh, look, I know I'm not supposed to be up here, but an acquaintance of mine invited me up for a drink. Oh, son. Let me give you a piece of advice. Take it from your old dad. You're holding Mr. John Jacob Astor's billfold. I saw you left it in the bar. You didn't realize that, now, did you, Mr. Dickey? John Jacob Astor? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm trying to be your friend here, son. Everybody needs a friend. I told you. You put the bite on the great man himself. I just want to keep you out of trouble, that's all. Nice young chap like you. There's a good boy. The best. You don't want to get caught in your first night out stealing billfolds. Especially one belonging to Mr. Astor. It's all there. I'll tell him I found it laying on the floor by the bar. Must have dropped it, eh? You're not going to report me? Of course not. I helped you before, didn't I? Time to be picking billfolds is the last night out. Men get all the moolah out of the safe. Now I'm sure we can work out something that'll be good for the both of us. You're a talented lad, you are. I can see that right away. Quick and slick with your hands, you are. What's your name, son? Your real name? Well, it don't really matter now, does it? Don't be so prickly. I can't help if I worry a bit about the real Mr. Merriam Dickey. You didn't ax the fella, did you? Of course not. He passed out, drunk. <laughs> <laughs> drunk as a skunk, eh, hey, Dickey? <laughs> I can see you and I are going to get along really well. <laughs> All passengers disembarking in Ireland must proceed to the boat deck. We have landed in Queenstown. Sir. No, don't make me go, I beg you. You've been fairly treated. I've given you plenty of money for your boat fare back to England. Oh, you're kind people. You have to understand. 
I'm just a young girl alone in the world. Please, miss. You've upset my wife. All this talk about your baby. I can help it. See? I had a baby what died. Your baby died? Where is your husband? There's no husband, sir. Anyway, he ran off. I can't go back to England. Oh, don't cry. Will, will you promise to keep these things to yourself? It would only upset my wife. Yes, sir. I promise. It would also help if you could get through the children's supper without spilling soup. I'll be nervous, but I'll do better now. If I give you this chance, you won't let me down? My word, sir. I give you my word. And I thank you for the opportunity to stay on the ship. I do, sir. I thank my lucky stars. Hello and goodbye to Ireland. Yeah, Rhode Isle. So green and beautiful. It makes me wonder if I should just stop here. Close to home. Is that what you're thinking? No. I'm gonna try not to think of them. My mother, my little brother and sisters. Their life is so hard. I try to think of the future only, like you. No, not, not like me. You don't want to be like me. Anyway, you'll send for your family someday. Yes. How do you know that? You don't know me. I know that you're good. Good person. Maybe the only good person I've ever known. So, uh, which is which then, eh? Oh, green's where I've been, yellow's where I want to go. <laughs> right. You know, uh, Phillips, you're probably the only bloke who took the ad seriously. Join the Marconi Company, see the world. <laughs> yeah, well, here we are. Yeah, like hell, see the world. How are we supposed to see the world, Phillips? Stuck in this bloody broom closet. Wynn Park, I'm expecting a Marconi gram. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Park. There's so many messages coming and going. Oh, there we are. There you are, sir. I'll be expecting several others. Uh, I'd like them delivered immediately. Right, sir. Smooth sailing all the way. I hope so. Cheers, Governor. It's a double eagle. It's a twenty-dollar piece. Look at that. Tin mines. Didn't that why I say tin mines? Oh, you split up with me. Right. Uh... Oh. <laughs> Please forgive me, I was a bore. A red dress. Do you see that? A red dress. It can't be. She's in mourning. She appears to have recovered. 
Palm du chess. Where I come from, we call a spud a spud. She's not sitting here. I won't have it. This is a disgrace. Hazel. Well, it's only been a few months since her Aunt Grace passed away. She ought to show some respect, even though her aunt was fast. Mrs. Paradigm, you feeling better? I am, Mr. Risley. Thank you. I feel queasy. Mr. Park? Oh, he had urgent business. I understand the Bolivian government has given them permission to open some tin mines. That's dangerous. That, that Zapata fellow? Well, that's Mexico, my dear. It's the same thing. Oh, here he is. I knew he wouldn't disappoint us. Evening. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> so it's mining, is it? <laughs> Takes perseverance. Me and my man, we never gave up when others did. Our little Johnny mine turned out to be the richest gold vein in the world. Of course, it <laughs> didn't exactly buy us happiness. Well, money doesn't always get us what we want. Mm. You unlucky in love, Mr. Park? <laughs> my family tree is missing a few branches. <laughs> I set out to prove to a young lady's parents that I was worthy of her. And she married someone else. Mr. Park, you could have any woman in the world. Except the one I want. You'll be going there, Mr. Park, to Bolivia? Yes, as soon as we land in New York. Oh, you can come to our Lulu's birthday party. I mean, one little week. The Bolivian government can wait. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Paradox. Will you tango? I thought you'd never ask, Mr. Park. My, my dear, are, are you forgetting you are in mourning? I've mourned enough. Oh, my. I feel absolutely faint. Dancing the tango? We haven't even finished the first course. They're just skipping to dessert. Excuse me, I thought, Mr. Park. Oh, I believe you went up for an early breakfast. Mm. Mrs. Paradigm, I have wonderful news for you. I have managed to convince the Countess of Rothes that she absolutely must take this state room. Her servants have packed all her things, so here I am, ready to move you. Move me? Well, you weren't happy in this suite, and it's my job to make you happy. Oh, yes. Well, that won't be necessary. I'm quite happy here now. Yes, but I've arranged for it. The Countess of Rothes took a great deal of maneuvering. I, I've changed my mind. I'm completely comfortable here. Thank you. Yes, but what do I tell the Countess of Rothes? Very small. I slept like a baby. Hmm. Bad news, Captain? Um, no, Mr. Strauss, just uh, routine. <laughs> uh, you and Mrs. Strauss, enjoy your breakfast. Mr. Ismay. Ah, uh, yes, what is it? A message from the ship Baltic regarding ice conditions. I'm told that you've been discussing operation of the ship with my crew. Yes, with regard to our speed. Certainly within my prerogative as chairman. Things are running smoothly. The machinery is bearing the test. The boilers are running well. The ship is steady. And with power to spare, we can beat the Olympics record and be in New York on Tuesday. I see absolutely no purpose in arriving a day early. Yes, and I see no purpose in meandering, keeping to a schedule devised for inferior vessels. But there are basic safety procedures nonetheless. I want the ship to perform to its full potential. 
In future, if there is any discussion about the operation of the ship, it must be cleared with me first. This may be my last crossing. But I am still the captain. When? Good morning. Good morning. You couldn't sleep? No. Me neither. And I was up thinking about you, and life, and your daughter, Claire. She's such a tomboy. Hates fancy clothes. She's very bright, curious. She loves dogs. She loves horses. She rides for hours with her father. What are we going to do? All those years I've wondered about you, where you were, and what you were doing. And now you're here. With you? For four days. going to do in America? I'm going to Minnesota with the other converts to build a new life. Uh, I want to do good in this world, Mr. Dickey. Do good? I want to be a teacher or a nurse, have children of my own and raise them to be good souls and to help their fellow men. Like Mrs. Jack teaches her children. Oh, the Jacks have been so kind to me. What's your dream? My dream? <laughs> You have a dream. I can see it in your eyes. You know something, Osa? I do have a dream. <laughs> have you ever seen one of those moving pictures? Moving pictures? Yeah, I saw one at a carnival peep show once. I put my eye to the hole in the box, and there was people in there <laughs> moving. Oh, I mean, there wasn't really in there, but it was like there was. <laughs> there was this beauty, Mary Pickford. That's my dream. Mary Pickford? No, no, not her. I mean, my dream is to be a part of it, part of the moving pictures. Well, then you must work for it and make it happen. No, stupid pipe dream. Anyway, you could be in the moving pictures. I mean, you're, you're much prettier than Mary Pickford. Well, moving pictures are nice. But uh, I'm not looking for pictures in a box. What are you looking for? God. They say we're at the dawn of a new age. The fires below are sending 50,000 horsepower to the propellers. Who knows what kind of progress we'll see in the next 100 years. Well, soon we'll be flying across the Atlantic in airplanes. <laughs> but nothing will ever be like this again. Nothing like the Titanic, a boat this big, powerful, and so beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's a rumor we'll be landing a day early. Only rumors. Captain Smith, could we bribe you to take your time? <laughs> to meander, of course, a little. I know what you mean. I suppose I will miss all of this. There's magic to it. I enjoy it most right here behind the wheel. It's almost sacred. May I steer it? Oh, you're right. It is magical. Good. I can feel the power beneath my feet. Are you sure that you know the way to New York? <laughs> no, I don't. Maybe I'll just turn it around and go back to England. How does that sound? Throws herself at it. But he danced with me. 
Well, it wouldn't have hurt for you to throw yourself a little, Lulu. Get your shoulders back. You ought to get a hump. Most of them don't bother to leave their jewels with the purser. They want to wear them. Come on. I'll show you. Hey. Room service. Wrong room. Room service. What did I tell you? <laughs> Here. What do you say? A diamond tiara. Go ahead. Try it on for size. <laughs> we case out all the staterooms, find out where they keep them, and then on the last night out. We strike. That's right, my friend. There'll be confusion in the morning. How do we get it off the boat? The loot never leaves the ship. Mr. Astor's loo. In the plumbing. We lay low and go about our business until the ship is fitted out, ready to sail again. I've got a plumber friend here. He's agreed to carry it all off in his tool kit. I don't know. You don't know what? Well, how do I trust you? <laughs> is that my buddy? Trust me. How do you know I wouldn't turn you in this minute if I got the urge? Hey, don't try to blackmail me. I could tell him a few things myself. I've worked for the White Star Line for 12 years. I'm a trusted employee. Who do you think they're going to believe? Me or Mr. Dickey, who isn't Mr. Dickey at all? I was watching from the hallway waiting for your father. <laughs> wrong door. Yes, wrong door. I, uh, it's the next one. I've never been in such a grand house before. And there you were. You, you, were, you were playing the piano. Chopin. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I only knew it was the most beautiful music. And the sun was coming through the windows and everything was golden. The sun and you. The dress. Dressing gown. And it was yellow. It wasn't golden. Anyway, the door was supposed to have been closed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lady lost a key. It was see-through. Your dressing gown? <laughs> yes, it was. When you stood up, I could see you through it. I thought you were going to die. We found your room. Mm-hmm. the key in the lock. Can you? I'm trying. Can you get the key in the lock? Shh. Can you?
<laughs> Look at you. Where have you been? Yeah, first class, hobnobbing with the rich folk. <laughs> a real dandy, all right. Only Mary Pickle could see you now. <laughs> Pickford, Mary Pickford. You look beautiful. <laughs> but also, men aren't supposed to look beautiful. Why? Take me word, I'm not beautiful, not in any way. You are beautiful to me. Maybe something has rubbed off of you and onto me. She's a thoroughbred, Mr. Light Toller. I'd swear there was a boat drill scheduled for this morning. Well, if I know the captain will skip it, some fool's gone and set it for the same time as a Sunday service, and the captain surely won't miss saying devotions. Chief Bell! Here, Mr. Chairman. Don't look so shocked, Mr. Light Toller. I frequently check in the boiler rooms. Tell me, uh, how many boilers are currently lit? 24 of the 29 are in service. That's, uh, 80%, is it? 84. And the propellers are at 75 revolutions per minute. And our speed? 21 and a half knots, sir. Have the men light two additional boilers? Well, I've no orders from the captain. You have my orders, Chief. I want us at 22 and a half knots by noon. Carry on. Sunday. Everyone's at church service except us. We're the sinners. Mm. You knew I was sailing on the Titanic, didn't you? wasn't fate at all. You planned it that way. Yes, but it isn't enough. God, I want to be with you always. Come to Bolivia. I know I have no right to ask, but come. When? Come with me. I don't know. I just don't know. Does it have to end? They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in the great waters, they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. In Psalms 107, verse 29, he maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Oh, that, that girl sets my hair on end. Amen. 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 Got a Masaba here. She's reporting heavy pack ice ahead. Large bergs. And field ice. Oh. Right, well, uh, I'll run it up to the bridge. 
Actually, not now. It's 20 minutes to five. Let's clear through some of this backload first, eh? Right. Fine. <clears throat> Now, you must come visit me sometime in Denver, Captain. I, I, I'm having a huge party in June. But I suspect that in June I should be in Hampstead making up for all the gardening I've been missing for the last 40 years. <laughs> I'd like to spend a little time with my wife and daughter. Oh, lovely. I understand. My husband, J.J., is ambitious and smart, but he's more comfortable in Leadville. Myself? I want to be more civilized. <laughs> I guess that's why we've gone our separate ways. Tell me something, Captain Smith. Won't you miss the sea? I suppose I shall. But just between you and me, sometimes being on a ship is like being in jail <laughs> with the possibility of drowning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you've just got three more days. Uh, it's only three more days. Yeah. <laughs> then you're a free man. The rain, don't run, you'll spill it. Look. What's going on here? Now, look what a mess you made. You seem to have your hands full. I'm Marge Miller. What's your name? Her name is Alice. Rain? Shh. Come along. This is Paradigm. Hello. You look happy. I am. I think I am. Mrs. Astor? Oh, yeah. please call me Madeline. Madeline, may I talk to you? I feel like I'm going to burst. Of course. Shall we? <laughs> what was it like when Mr. Astor got his divorce? It's painful. For everyone. I felt terribly guilty. But we've embarked on a new adventure. I try not to look back. Are you contemplating divorce? I have a young daughter. I could never leave my daughter. Oh, but surely you could arrange something with your husband. He would never let her go. I couldn't hurt him either. In a way, I feel indebted to him. He helped me at a terrible time in my life. <laughs> he, was, he was my knight in shining armor. You're in love with Mr. Park, aren't you? Yes. I have loved him for many years. These things seem like they can never work out, but somehow they do. Life is so short, Isabella. There's hardly any time, is there? Anything important? Another ice warning, sir. It's from the Coronia. Post the coordinates. I will, sir. Remarkably cold tonight, is it not? Yes, it is. I've sent word down to the carpenter to take care of the fresh water supply. It'll be below freezing during the night. Not much wind. A flat calm. In 24 years, I've never seen so calm a sea. Hmm. Low, low. Breathe and blow, wind from the western sea. Over the rolling waters go. Come from the dying moon and blow. Sir? Upon my word, I have not thought of that verse since I was a cabin boy. Love of the ocean brought me to the sea as a lad, and there's still wonder in it. Are we not a bit fast? Uh, Mr. Ismay, sir, he seems intent on breaking records. He was in the boiler room today. I'm going below. Keep sharp. The first sign of any haziness, we'll need to slow down. I'll deal with Mr. Ismay in the morning. Yes, sir. Patches ahead. That'll mean ice. Stop the engines. Stop down the boilers. We're all in position for the night. The engine ice. Hey, come on. 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 Hey, 
Dante be the dance? Come on, boy. No shame in having some joy. No, no, I, I, I don't know how. Show you. Right now, upstairs, the wine is flowing, the jewels are sparkling. The stars are jewels. We're all the same under the stars. I'd get them for you if I could. All them stars. There's so much out there just waiting for us to scoop it up. Hey, I promised you a tiara, and Jamie Purse is going to get you one. Who is Jamie Purse? Oh, yeah. I forgot. Um, Jamie Purse is my real name. But, Mr. Dickey? Uh, that was just the name on the ticket. How did you get the ticket? You're not a thief. Um, fact is, I, I found it. You're right. I'm not a thief. I'll just seize the opportunity. If you'll excuse me. I don't mean to interrupt, madam, but uh, me and Mr. Dickey have an appointment with the ship's purser. I gotta go. The purser? Don't go with him. I have to. Haven't you ever had to do things? Been forced to do things? I try to stay true to myself, if that is what you mean. You're so bloody good. Always on the straight and narrow. Well, that's not the way the world works. Look, maybe I'm not so great, but I can change. I wouldn't mind a piece of her myself. You want to get smashed in the face? You do. And you'll end up in the ship's brig, you silly bugger. No. I'm having a jar with the purser in his office. Perfect time for you to lift the key out of his pocket. Magic hands like yours. No problem. Understand? All right. You just stay away from her. You hear me? <laughs> She's too good for the likes of you. <laughs> and me. Four bells. Ten o'clock. Ocean's as smooth as a mill pond. Water's like oil. I was saying the same to the captain. He left word to be called if conditions become doubtful. Good night, Mr. Murdoch. Yes, right. Good night, Mr. Lighthorn. It's cold out tonight. Aye. By the smell of it, there's ice about. You smell it before you get to it. Of course, I wouldn't tell the big wigs that. They think you're stupid. But you know what I say? We're the eyes of this here ship. But don't expect no respect. What I expect are some proper glasses. I've got good eyesight, but I can't see in the dark. Well, I asked again just tonight. They were like to have bit me head off. Well, I'm through of the blooming sea. After this one, I'll go back home, make an honest woman of me, Linda. There's a ship off the southeast. It looks like a big passenger liner, maybe 10 miles away. No, she's something like ourselves, a small freighter. Not that far. Any other ships in the vicinity? The closest one's the uh, Titanic. Can't be the Titanic. She's closer to us in size. That must be a freighter. Or a fishing boat. Maybe. Have Evans radio the Titanic. Tell him we stop for the night. Surrounded by ice. Yes, sir. Phillips. Uh, we'll never get through all these. Yes, ma'am. I wish to send a wire. Right then. Address at the top. My husband is at our home on the Hudson. This has to go out immediately, do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the thing of it is... Uh, we're uh... bogged down here right now. 
The wireless broke down last night and wasn't back in commission until five this morning. We've got quite a backlog, ma'am. Please, this has to go out immediately. You have to send it right away before I... Before, ma'am. Before I lose my strength. Before I change my mind. Please, just send it. Well, uh, don't worry, Mum. It's very urgent. Promise me. We'll do the best we can, eh? Some bloody bloke's gonna get the shock of his life. <sighs> Shut up. Shut up, you're jamming me. Damn freighter, Californian. Stop for the night on account of ice. They keep interrupting. <sighs> Bloody Titanic wants me to shut up. Well, the same to you, buckle. I've got to get Mrs. Paradine's message out. Poor lady. Cool, your thanks, Chief. Hi, thanks, Jack. It's me prize. Tobacco from the East Indies. Keeps it next to me on. It's me treasure. Oh, that hurt. Are there really angels, Mama? Of course there are angels. Watching over you and your sister and your brothers. Over all of us. And over this ship to make sure we're safe. Oh. You're a mass of snarls, Miss Ophelia Jack. Need one of them angels down here to brush it out. It doesn't look right. Young girl like you alone in the world talking to that hooligan. We are all God's children. You said so yourself. A chap like that cause you nothing but pain. There. Here we are. You're almost an angel yourself. <laughs> We're off to bed now, Osa. Sweet dreams, Osa. Sweet dreams. Can you say your prayers, Osa? God will keep you from harm. And all the angels too, Mama. And all the angels too. <laughs> mm. Two and a half knots. What are we doing? It's not a race. We have our orders, Mr. Boxall. I hope Mr. Astor won't be playing cards too late. I hate to go to bed alone. I put a nice warm bottle under the covers, ma'am. It'll be very comfy. Finished? Mm hmm. I was talking to the Allisons, Nanny. Such a strange bird she is. I've been racking my brain trying to remember where I know her from. Her name is Alice. That's what the little girl said. Alice. Mrs. Astor, I must go get your husband. It just came to me. Alice Cleaver, that's who she is. What are you talking about? Um, nothing, nothing that concerns who you. Who is Alice Cleaver? Not in your condition. I'll speak with Mr. Astor. He'll know what's to be done.
you boys keep playing like this, you're gonna pay for my trip. <laughs> <laughs> and tomorrow night, poker. Oh. You must excuse me for just a moment. We'll wait. He's the one with the money. There's something wrong with my wife. Oh, no, no, she's safe in bed. Well, what is it, Ben? You must go have a word with Mr. Allison, sir. You must warn him. What are you babbling about? The nanny, I recognize her, sir, Alice Cleaver. She was convicted about three years ago for, for murdering her baby. Well, where did you hear all this rubbish? It was in the paper. They let her out of prison, said she was deranged at the time on account of the baby's father deserting her. They granted her leniency. Which is no excuse, if you ask me. Her little child... It's a... after 11. I can't go wake them up now. But she's in charge of the Allison children, sir, and she's a murderer. Perhaps you're mistaken. At any rate, nothing will happen tonight. I will talk with Mr. Allison in the morning. Uh, I'm sure he won't mind your waking him up under the circumstances. In the morning, Miss Miller. I will speak with Mr. Allison in the morning. She... She threw him from a train. The baby boy. The touch of haze on the horizon. There's ice ahead. Hey, is someone there? Yes, what do you see? Ice, dead ahead. A berg less than a mile away. Thank you. Iceberg right ahead. Hard to stop it, Mr. Hitchens. Hard to stop it. Helm is hard over, sir. Full speed astern! something. It felt like a hit. Hey! What's happening? Force it out from now! Move! Bring me! Alice, we can't allow water into the boiler! Ah! I'm, uh, I'm, I'm closing the watertight doors. Note the time and enter it into the log. Captain on the bridge. You've struck something, Mr. Murdoch. An iceberg, sir. I had to stop it and ran the engines full astern, but it was too close. I'm afraid she's hit it. Dearest God. I closed the watertight doors, rung the warning bell. Sir, do you hear me? Impossible. This cannot have happened. They're saying we hit an iceberg. That grinding noise we heard? Perhaps we lost a propeller. Good, it gives us more time for the bridge. <laughs> the boat stopped cold. Ah, a few hours and we'll be back on our way again. Anybody want a souvenir? <laughs> Is it 
Bella. Oh, did you see it? The iceberg? I've done a terrible thing. What? I sent Eddie a wireless. Yes. I can't give you up. I won't. I've told him all about us, and I've told him I'm going to live here with you. Tim Tubbs unsinkable. 